Hello and welcome to the presentation on measuring pressure. Take a moment just to read the learning objectives so you know what you're trying to get out of this presentation. Okay. Atmospheric pressure is very difficult to notice if you're living in it or you're used to living in it. When submarines dive, they actually shrink and uh, they have to be made from very, very strong materials um, in order to be able to withstand the pressure of the deep, deep ocean. But I'm sure if you were to be able to ask a fish, do you feel pressure? They would feel nothing. We are pretty much in the same situation. Although it may not appear so, gases weigh something. They have mass and they're affected by gravity. If you pick up a full can of butane, it's very heavy. Compared to an empty can of butane, it's considerably lighter. Okay, so the atmospheric, uh, the weight of the atmosphere bearing down upon us is what causes pressure due to the gases in our atmosphere. Okay, uh, let's come up with a generic uh, formula to be able to calculate the pressure due to a liquid or a gas as long as we know a few of the uh, basic properties of that gas and also the planet you're looking at as well. Okay, so let's imagine we've got um, this little pond or ocean if you want to call it that uh, and at the bottom there's a square rubber plug like uh, the plug you have in your bath. I want to know what the pressure is on this square rubber plug. The formula for pressure as we've seen in the previous presentation is force divided by area. First I've got to think about what's the force. Well the force I would need to pull this plug up would be equal or just slightly more than the weight of the water above it pushing down. So if we was to just project these lines up uh, you can imagine this column of water is the weight driving down onto this uh, black rubber plug. So I can come up with a term that describes the weight of that. Remember that weight is equal to mass times gravity and the mass of this column of water will be the density of the water multiplied by the volume. Because if you remember, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if I told you that water was a thousand um, kilograms per meter cubed, if you know the volume of the water we're talking about, you just need to multiply it by that 1000 kilograms per meter cubed and you get the mass, multiply that by gravity and you have the force due to that mass. Okay, so uh, force has been accounted for here, same as, it's the same thing, force is just the same as density times volume times gravity in this scenario and the area is the area over which this force is being applied and in this case I've labeled it A and B for the uh, the uh, horizontal and width uh, of this black square. Okay, so actually the volume is AB times H, the height. So I can cancel out A and B from this equation and I'm just left with pressure is equal to density times height times gravity. That is my formula for calculating uh, pressure due to columns of water or columns of gas or anything. Okay, uh, if I want to do it for different fluids I use the the density of that fluid, as long as I know the height of the fluid and the gravity where we're working, when we could do this on Jupiter or Venus or any other, you know, anywhere where there's gravity and you'll get different pressures. Okay, so let's have a look at this as an example. This is a uh, uh, apparatus you might use to measure the maximum pressure your lungs can exert. In this scenario, this guy is applying, well, he's managed to raise this column of water by the height shown here, 1.2 meters. Okay, So I simply take my formula, pressure is equal to density times height times gravity, substitute the numbers in for density, 1,000 kilograms newtons per kilogram, sorry, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times by uh, 1.2 meters times by 10, the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, And I get the pressure that he's been able to produce. Okay, And of course units, very important, pressure is measured in newtons per meter squared. Right, so how could I use this to measure atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure would be pushing on both ends of this at the moment. So what I really need to do is pump out the atmosphere from this side and then the atmospheric pressure on the other side would be able to push the liquid up. The problem is this is not very practical as creating a vacuum this way would be very difficult. Having to actually rely on the random motion of these um, air molecules here uh, to make it into the pump chamber so that I could then evacuate them from the apparatus 
it's very difficult to create a vacuum that way. Okay, so there's a much simpler method. Take a test tube, lay it down in water, and allow it to fill up. Okay, like you're doing the washing up or something. Then stand it up on its end so that the open end is facing down. At this point, you realise that the atmospheric pressure is actually very strong. It can easily hold up 10 centimeters of water. So try it again. This time using a 10 meter or maybe 11 meter long test tube, uh, and stand up your test tube. And you should find that, although I'm pretty sure you won't be trying this, that um, the atmospheric pressure is able to hold up about 10 meters of water with having a little vacuum at the top, okay? Because uh, you would start off like this, and as you raise it up uh, into the upright position, um, it's only the atmosphere that is pushing down on the water everywhere here that is holding this column of water upright. Okay, it's exactly the same as what we're looking at here. Uh, if you remove the atmosphere from here, the only thing pushing would be this. Okay, so in this scenario, we just started with no atmosphere, and then sort of like let the uh, stood it upright and allowed the atmosphere to to take the weight of the water. Okay, if you've done steps one, two, and three, which I'm sure somebody did at some point in history, you probably realise that that's a stupid idea. And actually, if you use mercury, which is a much denser liquid, you can get away with making this apparatus much much smaller. Okay, so this is actually uh, what would be known as a mercury um, barometer and you can use it to measure atmospheric pressure. You just use uh, the same formula, density of the liquid uh, times the height, um, which would be from the surface of the liquid to the top, multiplied by gravity. Okay, right. So let's have a look at an example question. Pause the video and read the question carefully. Have a go at answering it yourself. Okay, so quite simple. Read the question. You see that you've got the density of water, you've got acceleration due to gravity, and you've got um, the height of the water. So we're using the same old formula, pressure is equal to density times height times gravity. Stick in the numbers, 1000 kilograms per meter cubed, 20 meters, 10 is our acceleration due to gravity. Multiply out and you get 200,000 newtons per meter cubed. Remember, units are very important. Second part B, okay, you have to calculate the force and you know the pressure from the previous question, you know the area. Pressure is equal to force, times, force divided by area. Rearrange the equation by multiplying both sides by area and cancelling out, and you've got force is equal to pressure multiplied by area. Substitute your numbers in. Answer is in newtons because it's a force, 100,000 newtons. Okay. Part C is just asking you to state energy transformation from the top to the bottom. Okay. So we start with kinetic, sorry, potential energy, and we end with kinetic energy. Okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, you should now understand these three points. If you have any questions, please ask. Or